Hi, it's Lori at Sew Right Sewing Machines, and today I'm going to show you a couple of things about feeding your fabric. What it's like to feed your fabric with normal feed dogs versus the advantages of using feed via a walking foot. The walking foot is essential when you have unusual fabrics, such as velvet, such as minky, where your upper layer may be different than the lower layer. Um, also, if you've got multiple layers, you should use a walking foot. A lot of the most basic machines now come with a walking foot, and if they don't, they have one available, either made by the machine maker itself, or you can find a generic model that will fit your machine. Uh, one thing to look at is, look at the ankle of your machine. Is it high shank, low shank? We can help you shop for the right walking foot for your machine. So today I'm gonna to be using the Brother uh, BQ950. It's a great midline machine, and it does come with a walking foot. So um, we have our normal presser foot here, but in order to utilize a walking foot, I'm going to have to remove some of these elements here. Let me go back first to why a, a walking foot is essential, particularly in quilting. In quilting, you're using more than two layers of fabric. You're using three. You're using usually the top, the batting, and the backing. And because we've got all of these layers and we only have one set of feed dogs, I'm going to take this foot off so you can see. We only have the feed dogs here. It's essentially just feeding that bottom layer. What happens with the batting and the upper layer? There's nothing to really help support the feed. So I, before we began, I ran um, a normal stitch using my regular J foot on this machine to show you what happens without a walking foot. So I had nicely aligned all of these uh, layers evenly and look what happened. Just in my normal sewing, I started here. It started pulling the back fabric back, but not the up, upper fabric nor the batting. And it started to shift. That's because there's nothing to help assist that upper layer of fabric to feed properly. So when I turn it around, you see a lot of puckering and you see a lot of shifting. So my upper fabric shifted forward where it should have been pulled back along with the lower feed, with the lower fabric, all right? Okay, then I did a line of stitching using the walking foot on the sister of this brother, uh, BQ950. I used a PS700, Pace Setter 700. And look at how nice that flowed. So I'm gonna set up the walking foot to show you how I can recreate this stitch. I'm getting an even feed, less shifting. Um, this is a rather thick piece of batting. I might use a lower loft, um, but you're not getting that puckering. You're getting a nice smooth line of stitching here. Let me flip this over in comparison. Look at how terrible that looks. So you can really see that a major difference can happen with this device. So let me show you what this device looks like before I put it on the machine. It looks very odd. You've got this fork here that goes onto the needle clamp that holds the needle in place to support it. So, cause it's unwieldy. So it's gotta have a base for it to walk properly. We've got an opening underneath to allow for the feed dogs to still feed the lower fabric. But we've also got pads on this upper part and that supports the feeding of the upper layer of the fabric. We also have this device to help compress it. So we've got a lot of surface area to help cover and move and shift that upper layer as equally as the lower layer fabric. How do you put this thing on? It looks challenging. Let me show you how. So the first thing I did was I removed the foot. I took it off and then you see this ankle screw. So I'm gonna take this whole thing off and unscrew it. I'm gonna try to avoid taking that whole screw off just because it's so hard to put back on. So here we go. We've got the ankle off. We've got my foot off. We're gonna put this on here. We've got this little clip on here. That's gonna hug that shaft. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from the back towards the front. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go behind the machine and put that fork on my needle clamp, okay? Then I'm going to turn the machine around slightly. And again, this takes a bit of practice, but once you get the concept, you'll get it. 
having the right tools to do the job is very helpful. And this is a great screwdriver that comes with the machine. Because this is a screw that has a rather large opening. I want to tighten it so it's firm, yet I don't want to tighten it so that I st st strip the screw threads. Okay? Because again, I have to remove this once I'm done. A lot of people sew with this on and never remove it. Which is okay if you're doing like piecing and straight work, but if you begin to try some of the decorative stitches on the menu, I wouldn't recommend it on some of these stitches because there's a lot of dimensional sliding and gliding depending on the stitch you choose. I think if we choose our quilting menu, you may be okay. Sometimes the machine has difficulty with the walking foot on moving in reverse. So with the forward motion, you might be able to do some of these decorative stitches and maybe tie a knot on the beginning at the end of your line of sewing. All right, okay. My foot is installed. It's important to make sure that my needle position is right. So I'm gonna turn the hand wheel once just to make sure that everything's lined up. I'm not hitting anything and we look okay. Let me give it a tuck. Let me make one more correction just to make sure because I want it square on the machine. So I always test. Also, I always do a sample of my quilting before I do it on an actual quilt. So that way I can avoid ripping out stitches. Okay, let me see, I'm gonna put my foot down here. And this fabric's rather thick, so let's see how well this feeds. I'm putting needle down. There we go. So you can hear it moving. Every stitch, you see the walking foot also engaging and the pads are moving the fabric along. What you might notice in the foot itself, it's tapered up to allow for the thicknesses of fabric to feed through efficiently without it getting snagged. Okay. Done. Okay, let's see how this looks. Sorry, with one kerfuffle, it looks pretty decent. I don't have this issue going on at all. I have a nice smooth line of sewing. So try using the walking foot because it may bring you more satisfaction in terms of trying without it first. Take the time to install it because any heavy bag project, anything with leather, anything with faux fur, it's gonna feed so much more efficiently and effectively using the walking foot. If your machine doesn't come with one, you can contact us at Sew Right Sewing Machines, 718-468-5858. If you wanna just email us at info, info, info at sewright.com. You can also come in and try out one of our walking feet and one of our machines to see whether or not you're interested or you might want to outfit one for your machine. Thanks for your time, hope, again, hope to see you again soon.